Welcome Clarity Coders. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can use Google's official API to pull YouTube data into your programs. You can use this if you wanna track channels, analyze channels, whatever you want. By the end of this, we'll have a working program that pulls in data, and also I'll create some visualizations for you like these. Let's not waste any more time and jump right in. So to get started here, we're gonna sign up for Google's official API. To do this, we're gonna head over to this URL. If you don't have a Gmail account, you're gonna to have to sign up for one and then log into it. You'll end up on a screen that looks like this. From here, you can click the drop down above here. You probably won't have a project yet. And you can click new project. You can name that project whatever you would like and hit create. And now we have to enable the YouTube data app so let's go ahead and go down here and hit library now you can search through all the different api libraries here the one we're going to use is youtube data api version 3. go ahead and click that and then you should have a blue button that says enable here go ahead and enable that we're going to head back to our original screen once you've enabled it you can click on credentials and then you're going to do create credentials and then api key once you have an API key, it'll spit it out on the screen and you can push this copy button over here. We're gonna use this in our app. Now the interface I'm gonna to use today is DeepNote. Uh, I do that for a couple of reasons. One, you don't have to install a lot of the libraries we're going to use. So if you wanna follow along exactly like this, it's free, go to deepnote.com. It runs Python, just like you would expect in a Jupyter Notebook. If you wanna do this locally or in an IDE, that's fine as well. Do it however you would like. If you're in Deep Note, I'm gonna go ahead and hit new project. You can see that we got our new project up and running. We're gonna head over to integrations and we're gonna add a new environment variable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put our API key in here. So I'm gonna name it API underscore key. And then I'm gonna paste the value that we got from creating the API key. And you can call this whatever you want. I'm gonna call mine YouTube and then push create. Now we can go ahead and connect this integration and then we can use it in our project. So what we're doing here is we're just kind of putting our API key inside of an environment variable so we don't have to have it sitting there in the open notebook. Now once we get it connected, you should have a button that says how to use. If you click on that, it'll show you you have to import OS and then you can get your API key like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that code and we can head over to our notebook. This is our new notebook, so I'm gonna minimize this over here. I'm zooming in just for you guys. We can delete out this first line and we can paste in what we had from above. So essentially this should pull in our API key. Let's go ahead and save that in a variable. I'm gonna just call that variable API key. And now we got it in our program. Now these work just like Jupyter Notebook cells, so we can do like print, hello. You'll see we get our output there. So now that we have this set up, I'm gonna move our API key down here actually, this next cell. And we can put all the libraries we're gonna use in this first cell. We're not gonna use much, and most of these are already installed on DeepNote if you're using DeepNote. So we're gonna also import pandas as PD. We're gonna import Seaborn as SNS and import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. So these three bottom libraries, we're just gonna to use to visualize the data at the end. So if you're not doing that, you don't have to import them. And then to connect to the Google API, we're going to use from Google API client dot discovery import build. This is the only library we have to install here. So I'm gonna add a code block above this. And if you go to Google's quick start guide here, you can grab this pip install line. So this is the line we're gonna to use to install the libraries we need from Google. 
So I'm gonna add an exclamation point in front of this and then our install packages, shift enter, and we can run that. Now we can run our imports and they all should import. And you can see we're good to go there. So now all we're gonna do is we're gonna try and investigate a channel. So let's just head over to YouTube and pick a channel. I'm gonna go into incognito mode just because I only have like programming channels and things like that, not very exciting. So let's try and uh, grab something really popular, maybe on the front page here. Hmm, Mr. Beast or Dream? I'm gonna go ahead and pick Mr. Beast. Let's grab that channel. Now what we want is to get his channel ID, but you see that he has a custom URL up top. So when you're on their page, you can right click, view page source. Once you got this source code up, you can search for browse underscore ID. And then that will link you to their channel ID. So we're gonna copy this and paste it into our script. So it's in browse ID and then it's the value field. I think we're done with this, so I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. And I'm gonna leave this up top as well. So I'm gonna say the channel that we're looking into in this case is Mr. Beast, and that's the channel ID. Now below that, one more little piece of setup here. We're going to set up our YouTube instance. So we're gonna say YouTube equals build, which we imported above, YouTube, comma, our version is version three, comma, and then our developer key is equal to API underscore key, where we saved it above. So we can run this cell, and now we should have everything pretty set up from above. Now I'm gonna create functions so you can reuse these. So we're just gonna create a function to get a channel statistics. This isn't gonna be video based, this is gonna be the channel as a whole. So like how many views does Mr. Beast's channel have? I'm guessing it's more than mine. We're gonna define get underscore channel underscore stats. You could call this whatever. Whenever I'm making a function, I try to think ahead of time what I'm gonna pass in. We can always change this later. But I'm thinking we're gonna need our YouTube instance and we're also going to need a channel ID. Now, if you're wondering how I'm gonna build out these functions, they all come from the official YouTube API. So if you head over to this URL, hit reference, then you'll see the basic API on the left side. So if you want channel information, which is what we're gonna do first, you can click on channels. We don't want to update a channel. We don't want overview. We want a list of a channel so to list some data out. And you'll see here it has some common use cases. So this is pretty great documentation. And if you click the little code looking icon down here, you can even get specific or specific languages how you're going to access this information. So you can go from there. You can also send execute sample requests. So you can see if I have a channel ID here and I put in part and get that snippet content and statistics, you can see what that'll look like. And you can see this is the response we're gonna get back. So we're gonna try and follow along with this kind of setup here. So we're gonna move back to our program. Inside of our function, we're gonna make a request, so you can call the variable whatever. I'm gonna call it request. We're gonna use the YouTube instance that we passed in. We're gonna say channels dot list. And then inside of that list is where we need to push our information. So that part is required, and you can see that they passed in all the information. I don't know what of this we're gonna think is useful, so I'm just gonna take everything. So I'm gonna copy everything from that variable and paste it in here. So we're gonna get snippet, content details, and statistics. I'm gonna set our ID equal to the channel ID that we passed in. And I think that's all we need. Don't forget your comma here to separate your attributes. So now we're gonna get the response back. So I'm gonna call this variable response and I'm gonna set it equal to our request from above and I'm gonna execute that request. Now for right now, we're just gonna explore this a little bit. So let's print out 
that response and see what it looks like. I'm going to shift enter to run this cell and define that function. And now below, I'm actually going to call that function. So get channel stats. I'm going to pass in YouTube and I'm going to pass in our channel ID. And I'm going to run that. And you can see that we get a response back. I'm going to highlight it all. I'm going to go to a JSON formatter, paste that in. And now you can see a little prettier view of what we are looking at. So you can see that we only got one result back, which we expected because we used a very specific channel ID. And then if you slide down, you can see that most of our information is inside the items key. So what we're looking at here is it's giving us back a dictionary and inside that dictionary it has a key value pair. So it has kind, e-tag, page info. And then the one that we're interested in is items. Now inside of items, it has even more results that we might be interested in. And you can see that there isn't really anything useful in kind or e-tag or ID. So it looks like it begins to become useful to us again on snippet. It has like our channel ID and that sort of information. Content details. And then even further down, we have statistics. So it does look like all those are useful. So the only thing that I really wanna do is cut this down so we're just getting the items back. So inside of here, the only thing that I want to print out of that response is our items. Let's define this again. Let's run this again. And now we've broken down just into the item so we can get to our snippet, our content detail, and our statistic. And now instead of printing out this response, I'm gonna return it. So I'm gonna return that response so we can use it later. So I'm gonna set this to a variable called our channel underscore stats. And I'm gonna set that equal to whatever passes. Run this again, clear this output. And now we should be good to go. So now we should have all of our channel information inside of channel stats. Now we need a way to get all the video data back from Mr. Beast, but we don't wanna search because the YouTube API has a quota limit per day. Now your quota limit per day is 10,000 units, but each search costs 100 units. So search is very expensive and the most results you can get back from a search is 50. So one little trick we can do is inside of our channel stats, We only had one result, remember, we had a single channel, so we have to access the zero index, even though there's no other information on it. And we wanna grab out our content details. Now, if we look at that, we have an uploads ID here. Now, what that is, it's a playlist ID. So we can look at this playlist of his entire uploads and that'll be every video on the channel. And then we can search for, we can grab out playlists instead of doing a simple search and that will cost us a lot less on the quota. So this is gonna be the playlist ID that we're gonna search for. So let's set this, let's set a playlist underscore ID equal to our channel statistics. So this will allow us to find his playlist uh, down the road a little bit. So we're gonna hold that for right now. Let's check out some of our channel statistics just to see what we're working with here. So let's say, let's see what our channel underscore stats. Remember we have to grab from the zero again. And remember there was a snippet and a statistics. Let's look at the statistics. You can see that he does in fact have more views than my channel and more subscribers 
and videos 704. So that's what we're gonna kind of reference here. We're gonna see if we can grab those 704 videos down and take a look at them. So this was more or less just to see some information. We got what we needed here, which was the playlist ID. So now we can kind of move on from this and try and get out his video data. So we got our channel stats function. Above here, I'm gonna create another function. So here, I'm gonna try and get an entire video list. So eventually I want the details on each video, but right now I need the video IDs. They have an ID number as well to get it from the API. So what we're gonna use is that YouTube playlist called uploads and try to get every single ID of a video. So hopefully 704 videos inside of a list that then we can later pass to the API to get specific details on each video. So like how many views that video had, how many likes, how many dislikes, all that kind of information. So this is almost like a helper function. So I'm gonna call it get video underscore list. We're gonna pass in YouTube and we're gonna pass in our upload ID. Let's create a video list. And we can just set that equal to nothing for right now. Then we're going to make our request. So we're going to make a request again, and we're going to do YouTube.playlist items. Now, again, you could search to find this, but we don't want to do a search because that's really cost intensive here. Inside here, we can define some parameters. So we need to define what we want to get back. So we're gonna say part equals, this time we're gonna use snippet and content details. We're hoping this has the video ID in it. We need to pass in our playlist ID. So it is called playlist ID, and we're gonna set that equal to our upload ID that we've we passed in before. Now upload ID is a playlist ID, but it's the playlist of your entire channel. So every single video. Now we're also gonna do something below. So we're gonna set max results equal to 50. Now this may surprise you because you probably think we should pass in 704 or something bigger than 704 because he has that many videos. This is a result between five and 50 that YouTube gives you how many results will be on a page. 50 is the max. So we want more results than that, right? We want 704 results in this case, but the most we can get at one time is 50. Now the next page will have a next page token that we can use to get the 50 results after that. So we're gonna get results zero to 49, and then we'll get 50 to 100 and whatever, 99 or whatever and we can keep moving on through that using that page ID. So that's, we wanna set our results as high as we can and the highest we can is 50. So we're gonna use a variable called next page. I'm gonna set that equal to true. So when this is false, that means there's no more pages. We're gonna stop looking. Then I'm gonna use a while loop. So I'm gonna say while next page. So as long as that variable from above is true, it's gonna keep searching for more results. So while next page, we want to execute our result or our request. So the request from above. So I'm going to do response equals request dot execute. Then I'm going to grab our data out. So I'm going to call this variable data. Actually, I'll set it data equals response. And then again, it has an items field on it. Now you can look at these individually to break them down. I did this ahead of time. So it has the same JSON structure and we're, we're grabbing out the items out of it. Now inside of this data, so inside of this data request, there's a single result for each video. Now for this first page, it's obviously gonna have 50 results in it and we wanna iterate over that. We don't always know that it'll be 50 though, so we're gonna use a for loop. So we're gonna say for each video in our data response, we wanna grab out a video ID. That's what we're ultimately looking for so we can get the details on the video. So we're gonna say video ID equals video. We're gonna grab out the content details. And then inside of there, there's another key, which is video ID. 
Now I'm gonna do a little sanity check here and I'm gonna say if our video ID, so what we said above, is not in our video list already, not get video list, not in our video list from up here. So this is the video list I'm referencing. So if it's not in there already, let's go ahead and append it. So let's say video list dot append. And we're gonna append that video ID. Now this would work as long as we got out of the while loop. This would work um, and gives, give us 50 results, but we want more than that. We want all the videos on the channel, no matter how many they have. So down here, we're gonna say if there's a next page token. So if this next page token exists in our response dot keys, so in that JSON, if there's a key that says next page token, that means there's more results. So let's go find those results. If that's the case, our next page is going to stay true. It's kind of redundant. I don't think we need to add that, but and our request, our next request will be almost the same as bef before. So we're gonna copy this. We're gonna paste in our request, gonna highlight it, push tab a couple times so we're on the same line here. So you can see this is the exact same request before. So we're gonna get the exact same results. So if you left it like this, you're gonna get the same 50 videos over and over again forever, and you're gonna blow your API limit. So what we want to do is we want to add a, another value in here and we're going to say our page token equals our response page token. Response next page token. So now the difference is it's going to actually reach out and grab the next page of results and it's gonna continue iterating over those results until it's all done. Now, if there isn't a next page token, so we're on this if statement here. So if there isn't a next page token, we're gonna to add an else and we're gonna set our next page equal to false. And this will exit our while loop. So you wanna be careful with this. If you mess up the indentation or something like that, you may make a lot more calls than what you thought you were. So we got everything set up now. After our function's done, we can go ahead and return our video list. So this shouldn't have any details in it. It should just be a simple list with, in our case, hopefully 704 uh, results or something like that. So here's our total function. Find video list, we got our while loop, we're returning our video list from that. We need to pass it in to get started, our YouTube instance and our upload ID, and it's gonna return us a video list. So let's go ahead and do that down here. Now I'm using the same variable name, you don't have to, I'm gonna call it video list because why not? And our function was called get video list. And don't forget, if you're using Jupyter Notebooks, I don't use Jupyter Notebooks that often, so don't forget to run your cell to define your function. So I'm gonna shift enter so we actually define that function. So get video list, we're gonna pass in YouTube, and we're gonna pass in our upload underscore ID. Awesome. I'm gonna shift enter, cross our fingers here. This is our upload ID. The, oh, we called it playlist ID here. So we can go ahead and use playlist ID. Now you'll notice we named, now the name is different than the function parameter and that's fine, it's doing it by order. So we can call this whatever we want. You could make it the same if you wanted to, but you don't have to. We're gonna do shift enter. Oh, and I messed that up. So we actually need to dig a little deeper here to get the playlist ID. So we're actually gonna dig into related playlists. And then here we're gonna do upload. We'll run that. That should give us a new playlist ID. You can check that if you want. I'll do playlist. 
underscore ID here. And you can see that we got a playlist ID out again. I think this is the one we want, so we're gonna pass that instead. Notice it just gave me a bad response back saying that playlist didn't exist. Try this again. Cool, we have a video list. We don't know what's in it, but we hope it's video IDs. So we can do video list at the zero index and just see what we got. And you can see that we got an ID back. Cool. Now let's do one more sanity check here. Let's say the length of our video list. And you can see it's 704. So we got the entire video list of all our video IDs. So we're ready to build our next function, which is actually getting the details of our video back. All right, so we got our video list back. Let's continue on here. I'm scrolling up just a little. I'm gonna enter another code block here, and this is going to get our video details. So now that we have our list of videos, we can actually get our video details back from YouTube. So I'm gonna define a function called get video details. I'm gonna pass in our YouTube instance, and I'm gonna pass in our video list. Now here, I'm gonna build out a list called stats list. Now, you would think we could pass our entire list of videos to YouTube and it would hand us back all the details for all the videos, but it's not going to do that. Again, it's gonna have a hard cap of 50 there. So now we do know how many videos we have, right? We have a list that has 704 items. So we're not gonna use a while loop this time because we know exactly how many we have. Even if it's dynamic, even if you change the channel to uh, Good Mythical Morning, who has 2000 plus videos, it's going to dynamically know the link based on that video list. So we're not gonna hard code that in, but we are gonna use a for loop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say for i in range, now for range, you have three parameters. You have your starting parameter, you have your ending parameter. Now we don't wanna type in 704 and hard code it because it won't work if you use someone other than Mr. Beast. So we're gonna say len of our video list. So however long our video list is, and here's the tricky part. We're gonna add a third parameter. So we're gonna go comma, and then we're gonna add a 50 in here. Now what that means is we're gonna jump 50 every time. So it's going to do zero to 49, then it's gonna go 50 to whatever, so on and so forth. So it's gonna count by 50. So we're not gonna miss any videos, and we're not gonna go over YouTube's limit of 50 items per request. Now we can make our request. So we're gonna say request equals, we're gonna say YouTube.videos this time. We're gonna do our dot list again. We're gonna set our part equal to, and we're gonna do the same thing, the full snippet, content details, all that jazz that we did from up here. So we're just gonna grab everything we can about a video. And our ID is going to equal a portion of our list. So we're gonna grab a piece out of our list but only 50 at a time. So we're gonna say video list, and we're gonna slice it from wherever our I index is right now. So it's gonna start at an I index of zero, and then our I index plus 50. Okay, so that may be a little out there at first, but the first time this loops through, it's going to give a I value of zero. So it's gonna slice from zero to 50. So it's gonna grab, because 50 is exclusive, it's gonna grab from zero to 49. So it's gonna pass in 50 IDs, and YouTube's gonna give us back 50 pieces of data. And then we're gonna to go to the next one. And the next time it's gonna pass in 50 and 100. And it's actually going to give us back results 50 to 99 so on and so forth. So that's going to be how we're not going to blow the limit that we have here. So now we can get back our data. So we're gonna get data equals request dot execute. Now, if you want to, you can look at this response and get all the details of what's going to be on a video. So why am I doing this? I'm gonna get something off of these videos, but maybe you wanna get something different. So I'm gonna show you how you can do that. So we're gonna to go to list. I did the code snippet again. 
We're gonna enter everything like we are. It has a sample video here. We don't really care. We just wanna see what the response is. And we can go ahead and execute that piece of code. Now you can see our response is down here. You can see what we're gonna grab off of it. So if you wanted to change this up, you can grab whatever you want. I'm gonna grab out the title, which you can see here. And I'm gonna grab out a bunch from statistics. So I'm gonna grab out the view count, the like count, the dislike count, and that sort of thing. So if you want something different, look in here. You can find all your results there. But that's how I'm figuring this out. So we got our request response. Now this should have 50 videos on it, at least the first time. So we're gonna do another for loop here. So we're gonna say for our video in data, and we're gonna grab it out of items again. That's the only really useful part we want. Now this is up to you. This is what I'm grabbing off the video. So I just follow along with me for right now and you can do add or subtract whatever you want. So I'm gonna grab out the title and that's gonna equal our video, our video. We're gonna grab this off of snippet and it's at the key of title. Copy this, our next one is also on snippet. So the next one we're gonna grab is published and it is at the snippet of published at. And then we have a description and that's going to be at snippet as well. Description. And then finally, I was interested in how many tags people are using. So I did another one called, I'm just copying the line from above. So I did another one called tag underscore count. And that's on snippet as well. And it's actually a list. So if we grab tags here, this is gonna return us a list and I can say the length of that. So this will tell how many tags the video had. We can do view count. I don't like how I'm spacing these. <laughs> there we go. So we can do our view count. So these are going to start being on statistics. So I can do video statistics. These next ones are all gonna be on statistics. So we'll do view count, like count, dislike count, comment count. That should be good. This is going to be our like count. This we can make our dislike count. And this can be our comment count. All right, now we need to dive into each of these. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use dot get because I'm afraid that it might not have a comment count or something if it's a weird private video or whatever. So I'm gonna do dot get and then I'm gonna search for view count. I'm gonna see if there's a key of view count. Now, if there isn't a view count, if that doesn't show up, I just wanna throw a zero in there. I'm gonna actually do that for all these, just so we don't get an error here. Make sure there's no space or anything. So for the light count, we're gonna search for light count. Now these have to match exactly, because we're looking for the keys that are in that JSON file. So capitalization matters. Uh, no underscores, don't change it at all. Dislike count. And this is called comment count. So now we should have everything that we want to build our stats dictionary, and we're gonna paste that inside of our stats list. So we have one for each video. So we have one dictionary for each video. So I'm gonna say our stats underscore Dictionary equals, I'm gonna create a dictionary here. I'm gonna say title equals title. Published equals published. And so on and so forth.
Cool. So now we should have a dictionary. And at the end of that dictionary, or after we create that dictionary, we can append it to our stats list. So we're going to say stats list append. And we're going to append our stats underscore dictionary. I forgot a comma here, so make sure that you remember your comma. And then after we're done with this function, we want to return out our stats list. We're going to return our stats underscore list. I also stopped putting commas here, so make sure you put your commas on these as well. Cool, it actually worked. <laughs> so now we got our stats list defined and hopefully we can get that back out. Now we're gonna actually try and run that code and hopefully we get a list which has 704 items and each have the stats of our videos on it. So let's call this video data and we can set that equal to get underscore video underscore details. We're going to pass in our YouTube instance again and our video underscore list. We're going to run that. It does not like our key of tags. So let's go up and look at that. I probably just misspelled it. Let's say dot get. And then we'll pass in tags. And if it doesn't find anything, let's just return a blank list whose length will be zero. If it doesn't find any tags, we're just going to say that the video had zero tags. And we'll put a comma there. Oh no, we don't want to come. This is the parenthesis that closes our get function. We need another one to close our length function here. There we go. Okay, that worked. So we got it defined again. Let's try this again and see if we get any other errors. You can see this time it's executing and taking some time. That's a good sign. It's probably getting us some video data. So let's take a look at one of the results of our video data. So we're hoping it has 704 results, but let's take a look at the first. Offering people $100,000 to quit their job. That sounds very Mr. Beastie. So I think we got something here. You can see it's in a cleaned up format as well that we picked out. So you got your view count, your likes, your dislikes and all that jazz. Let's see if we have all of our videos. So we'll look at the length of our video data. And you can see there is indeed 704 results. So this video is getting a little long, but let's take a quick peek into some visualizations here. So we can create a data frame with this data pretty easily now in the format it's in. We're going to say df equals ED dot data frame. And then we can pass in all of our video data. That's going to create a data frame for us. And that'll just make our visualizations a little bit easier. Now I'm going to paste in a couple lines of code that I'm going to walk through with you. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add a parameter for title length. So I'm going to add a title length in here. So I'm creating a new column called title length and I'm using this line df title.str.length to find out the length of the title. So I'm curious 
how many characters he's using in a title. Then these next four, we're just changing these to numeric columns. It put them in as objects, so we're going to say that the view count, like count, dislike count, comment count are all numeric columns. Then finally, I'm adding a reactions frame as well. So that reactions is, I'm counting just like YouTube metrics, so anytime someone reacts to a video, so like liking my video or subscribing to my video, <laughs> things like that. So we're adding up the like count for a video, the dislike count, the comment count, and, oh here, I actually did comment count. Just one comment count. And then we're gonna save it to a CSV. So if we wanna do more anal analysis down the road, we don't wanna re-download all of his videos, so I'm going to add, create a CSV. This isn't Good Mythical Morning anymore, this is Mr. Beast. So let's run this. You can see that it added those columns. Also, if you expand our folder, you should see we do have a Mr. Beast data CSV now. So now you can see we also did uh, head parentheses, which is gonna print out the first five rows for us. So you can kind of take a look at your data as well. Now, once you have that, we can start doing some plotting here. I'm gonna copy pasta some of these in here and just talk about a little bit. You can get this notebook, obviously, if you'd like. You can see the, this is plotting out the tags he used. So I'm using the SNS library from above the Seaborn library to do a distribution plot of tag count. So this is the number of tags he used and how many times that number occurred. So you can see most of the time he doesn't use any tags at all. There's 200 occurrences of him using zero tags. The next one, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing except with title length. So I wanna see how often, how long his titles are on average. So you can see most of the time it's right around 40 characters, sometimes longer but you can see the distribution here. Now I'm gonna create a new data frame in this next block. And I'm gonna call it highest views. So I'm gonna take DF and largest, the 10 largest view counts, and I'm gonna sort by those. Now I'm gonna truncate his title. So if they're longer than 40 characters, I'm gonna cut them off there so it doesn't blow up our chart. And then I'm assuming his largest videos are going to be in millions of views. So I'm going to take whatever the view count is and I'm gonna divide it by a million. Now, if you do a subscriber like me who only has hundreds or thousands of views per video, you obviously don't wanna put it in millions, but Mr. Beast, his top 10 videos will all be in the millions for sure. So we're gonna go ahead and run this. This will give us a brand new data frame to work with. And then we can plot out those results. So we're gonna look at his 10 most viewed videos. So what we're doing here is we're doing sns.set just to set the plot dimensions. Our X is going to be our view count. So our view count is gonna be horizontal. And then our titles are gonna be on our Y axis. So the most popular videos. You can see I'm setting the title, I'm setting the labels. You can play with that however you want on your charts. I'm gonna run this cell. And you'll see here, I used a set limit between 20 and 32 million, but all of his videos are larger than that. So we're gonna delete out that limit and run it again. And you'll see that his 10 largest are all between 80 and 120. So if you wanna spread this chart out a little bit more, we can add back in that limit. And we can say between 80, and 120. Now this is gonna be the same data, it's just gonna show up a little different. So you can see that's a little more dramatic of a chart, I guess, actually through 115. Cool. Now you get the gist. I'm gonna leave the rest of these up here. I wanted to look at one just to see. I wanna do the most thumbs down videos for Mr. Beast. So I'm gonna copy pasta this in here. I'm doing the exact same thing, except I'm doing it on the dislike count. And I'm creating a new data frame for this as well, just in case you wanna do something else with it. And now let's plot these. Now again, a catch when you're doing this, watch out, I did 
uh, dislike count divided by 1,000. So again, if you're doing someone like me, I don't usually have a thousand dislikes on my videos, not because people don't dislike them, just because there's not that many people watching them. So you wanna do a different one depending on the size of the YouTuber here. But Mr. Beast, that should be good. So you can see we're gonna make another plot. So this should give his 10 most thumbs downed videos. You can see it's between 50 and 250. So if we wanted to, we could add in a limit there as well. Copy this. We can start it at 50 instead. We can go 50 to 250 to 275 or something. Awesome, now you can see his most thumbs down videos. So the most thumbs downed videos. Okay, I could see this. I could see this saying Logan Paul 100,000 times. I could see you disliking that video. So it looks like we're onto something. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, a little different format. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. If you want any other videos, any other analytic stuff, let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. And until next time, keep coding.